faith either. It's not always between a person and God. I have faith that someone will come tomorrow morning. There's no proof of faith, and it's usually highly doubted by people who lack it. Faith is described in the dictionary as a firm belief in something of which there is no proof. Complete trust. The first part sounds pretty easy. A firm belief, not too committed. But the second part, that sounds pretty intense. Complete trust. Complete. Unquestioning. Faultless. Exhaustive. That's a lot of dedication for something that's unseen. To me, faith comes down to one thing. It means that I believe his way is the right way, not always the easy way. And no matter what I do to mix things up, he will be there for me to help me get myself back together. Faith doesn't just happen. It's something that builds over time. It's trust. I grew up at St. Matthew's Episcopal Church in Snowville. <laughs> I've been taught about God and Jesus ever since I can remember, and I've always had my parents all example to look up to. As I got into middle school and high school, I thought I had a pretty good thing going. I went to church, youth group, and Bible study. I talked about how I loved God and fully trusted Him, how I'd give up anything for Him if He asked with no doubts, because I had faith it would be the right thing to do. I also never thought He would ask me to, so it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> I was wrong. On Christmas of 2007, God took the then most important thing on my life without asking. My horse, Roni, died while I was on a ski, ski retreat in West Virginia, about 400 miles away. <laughs> Romy meant everything to me. Romy. Sorry. When he died, I literally felt empty. It broke my heart. As much as I wish I could say I didn't, I blame God. He took my best friend from me. The only thing that could so well make me feel okay, even when everything else wasn't. I was hurt and betrayed. How could the God that I loved my entire life turn on me? Wasn't he supposed to be the trustworthy one? I knew I said I would give up anything for him, but how could he ask this much of me? I didn't talk to God for a long time after that. I still went to church and did all my normal church things, but I didn't listen. I didn't believe God was the same thing I was always taught. I didn't question my faith. I flat out denied it. I felt like it was all a lie. I didn't trust God anymore. I stopped praying. I stopped letting myself think about Romy, and soon I got a new horse named Nico. But I wouldn't let myself love him. I stopped caring about everything that meant so much to me before. It was almost a whole year later that I let my walls come down a little bit. I was getting tired of denying God and running from everything that made me feel whole. It was actually on a half new weekend that I realized how badly I'd messed things up. I suddenly felt even more broken than when Romy had died. After all, what kind of God would want someone like me? I had turned my back on him. I didn't deserve God, and there was nothing I could do to change that. I felt ugly, broken, and unattractive in every way. I became afraid of being close to people because I thought they would get to know me and instantly regret being my friend. I knew that people said God loves everyone, but somehow that didn't apply to me. I felt that for the first time in my life, I was utterly hopeless, and it wasn't going to be okay. A lyric from one of my favorite songs says, Hope is the bravest thing I have, and that was never more true. All I could do is hold on to <laughs> All I could do is hold on to the hope that maybe God would somehow find a way to forgive me, even though I couldn't imagine that ever <coughs> happened. I was so ashamed of myself. I was afraid to pray to God. Why would he want to listen to me? I worked really hard to get to a point where I thought I deserved God, but I always fell short. <coughs> Rahab was a woman in the Bible who was least likely to deserve God's attention. She was an outsider, and on top of that, she was a prostitute. The only thing she had to go on is that she had heard all the great things God had done for the Israelites, and she wanted a part of that too. All she could do was hope against all hope that God would take her, broken and all, and he did. He even used her flaws for his will. 
David's line came through Rahab. Jesus was a descendant of Rahab, a woman by who anyone else's standards didn't deserve it. That is the most beautiful part of God. He takes you as you are. Being Christian isn't about having the perfect faith. Believing unquestionably is not what faith is about. Faith is searching for the truth. It's about being in a relationship with God and pursuing that with all you have. Sometimes that means you have to lose your faith to find it. If I hadn't lost Romy, I wouldn't be as close to God as I am today. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, While faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we cannot see, you have to trust God above all else and trust in his plan for you. It's hard. God never promised it would be easy or fun. Real faith makes you an alien, different in a culture that values uniformity. It's uncomfortable and requires the need to be closer to God. Faith changes you from the inside out. As soon as you take that first step, that leap of faith, your life changes. Is it really worth all of that? Realizing I had hope in God changed my life. Finally understanding what hope, trust, and faith were redefined my relationship with him. I could finally stop focusing on how screwed up I was and start moving towards being close to God. Getting closer to God made everything in my life brighter. Not everything was easy or even better, but I can face it now. I'm sure of what I hope for, and I'm certain of what I cannot see, and no one can take that away. I have faith.